good people of YouTube, my name is Spanner, welcome back to my Warframe guide. On this video, we will talk about Cetus and the Plains of Eidolon. The Plains of Eidolon is the first major open area of Warframe. It is not procedurally generated like other missions. Instead, the Plains consist of a large static area with unique features. The hub for this area is Cetus. Both the Plains and Cetus can be accessed fairly early in the game, as soon as you complete the Vor's Prize quest. Let's start by going to Cetus. This is the home of the Ostrons, a syndicate that you can gain standing with. You gain standing by completing bounties that you get from Konzu over here. There are 5 bounties that you can complete per day. On Cetus and the Plains, a day consists of 150 minute cycles with 100 minutes of daytime and 50 minutes of nighttime. As an aside, a word of warning. If you haven't completed the War Within quest, which is available after you unlock the Sedna Junction, don't go into the plains during the night. There are some enemies that you cannot kill yet. This is all I'll say about that. If I say any more, there will be spoilers, and uh, trust me, you don't want to be spoiled about that. For now, let's continue to talk about bounties. When a day is over, the 5 bounties that Konzu had available are replaced with other 5 new bounties. These bounties operate on a similar rotation mechanic that is available on endless mission types. This means each bounty can have different rewards based on the current rotation. You can only have one active bounty at a time. Once you select the one you want, you may leave through the gates and enter the plains. Bounties have different stages, based on their difficulty. The easiest ones have three stages, while the harder ones have five. After completing each stage, you are rewarded with a random item from the current bounty reward pool, and the later stages have higher chances to give rare rewards. After a bounty is complete, return to the gates, in this area of the map over here, and re-enter Cetus to pick up a new bounty if you want. These bounties will also give you standing with the Ostrons, as they are a syndicate like the main six we discussed before. Gaining standing will allow you to rank up in the syndicate and also to buy several items available from vendors around Cetus. You can check your current standing and daily cap from your profile page. Cetus is also home to the Quills Syndicate, which we discussed on the previous video. Besides bounties, there are some other things you can do in the plains. If you don't have a bounty, some optional missions will occasionally pop up. These are called incursions, and they have their own rewards and rotations. Besides actual missions, you may spend your time doing whatever you want. The plains are home to unique resources like Irodite and Grok Drool, so you may want to get your hands on those. Just be aware that the plane's unique resources are only used to craft items you get from Cetus and to advance in their syndicates. They are not really used anywhere else in the game. Some of the unique resources from the planes are acquired normally by just breaking the respective item or container that drops them. Others are locked behind fishing and mining. To mine, you will need a cutting tool that you acquire from Old Man Sumbat in Cetus. This is a gear item, so equip it in your gear wheel. When you have it selected, first you must locate a mineral vein. There are two types of veins. Red ones are ore veins, and blue ones are gem veins. While roaming around with the cutter selected, you will hear a beeping sound, indicating how close you are to a vein. It will also indicate the distance to that vein. On the left side of the HUD, you can also see the number of veins nearby. Just use that information to track down a mineral vein. Once you find it, you will have to use it to cut the minerals. Aim your cutter and you will see the outline of the mineral. Just fire the cutter and trace this pattern as accurately as possible until you get the minerals. The mining progress is indicated by this yellow bar at the top. While tracing the pattern, the 5 icons above the progress bar will start to fill up. This indicates the quality of your current cut, 
which depends on how accurately you're tracing the pattern. The higher the quality, the more ore and gems you will get. While you're mining, the pattern will start to phase. You can make it reappear by stopping the mining process, but this will reduce the cut's quality. The longer you stare at the pattern before starting to cut, the longer it will take before it vanishes. Besides the regular cutter, there are two more advanced ones, which are direct upgrades. The higher tier one, the advanced no sam cutter, is the only one that can extract Eidolon gems from gem veins. Ores and gems can then be refined. This requires a blueprint for the refined ore or gem, which are available from Old Man Sumbat. You can also give him gems to gain some Ostron standing. Fishing is different. To fish, you need a fishing spear. There are three available, but unlike mining, they each have their purpose. Some fish can only be caught by using one of those spears. I'll leave a link to fish types and the spear needed to catch them in the description. When you have your spear, equip it in your gear wheel. Fish can be caught in all bodies of water, but the type of fish you get varies depending on the time of day and the place you're fishing. You can see this in detail in the fishing guide on the video's description. Once you're near a body of water, select your spear and wait. You will start hearing splashing noises nearby and, once you see the fish, aim your spear and throw it. If you hit the fish with the correct spear, one hit will be enough and you will catch it. This is basic fishing, but you won't catch all types of fish like this. There are fish that will require bait. Bait blueprints can be acquired from Fisher Hyluck in Cetus, and there are different types of bait available depending on the fish you want to catch. These must be crafted before you're able to use them. Unlike spears, you don't need to equip these in your gear wheel. When you select the spear, your gear wheel will change and show you all fishing related items you currently have. There is also another item, which Hyluck sells, that will make fishing easier, the Luminous Dye. This will make nearby fish glow blue when you use it. Again, it must be crafted before using. With our bait and dye in hand, let's catch some other fish. Let's try and catch some Murkray. Murkray can only be caught using bait and only at the sea during the day or night. Once you're at the sea, you will want to find fishing hotspots, areas where you can see visible ripples on the water surface. This is a good area to use bait in since it increases the chance of fish to spawn. Fish will also spawn more often if it's raining. Once you find the hotspot, select your spear and then select the bait you want to use. In this case, we will use the Mercury bait. After the bait is selected, throw it using the indicated button on your screen. To use a die, the process is the same, select it and throw it into the water, just like bait. Then just wait and throw your spear at fish that appear. For Murkray, we will want to use the Lanzo fishing spear. The bait and die will eventually expire, so throw some more if you want. The hotspot will also eventually disappear, requiring us to find another one. When you're back in Cetus, you can go back to Fisher Hyluck and give her the fish for cutting into parts. These parts can be used to craft various things. You can also give her fish to gain Ostron standing. Bigger and rarer fish will give more standing. To finish up the topic of resources, there is one that is a bit more elusive, Cetus Wisps. These are small beings that hover very close to bodies of water in the plains. If you don't pick them up quickly, they will eventually disappear. They have set spawn points and only a few will spawn during a given plains session. You must leave and re-enter the plains to spawn new wisps. They can also be acquired from bounties. One other thing we can do in Cetus is to craft a Zaw. A Zaw is a modular melee weapon that you can craft at Hawk's Anvil in Cetus. To do so, you will need three parts that Hawk sells. A Strike, a Grip 
and a link. All of these have different properties and can be mixed and matched however you like to craft the type of weapon you want. When you have three parts that you like, you must craft them in your foundry. Then give them to Hawk and he will craft your Zaw. When this Zaw is at rank 30, you can go back to Hawk and he will guild it. Gilding a Zaw resets its rank to 0 and you can assign a polarity to one of its mod slots. You will also be able to name it. After the Zaw is gilded, it will earn you mastery points. You can only get mastery from Zaws per each unique strike that you level. This means that if you have leveled a gilded Zaw with a Baller Strike once, if you guild another one with the Baller Strike, it will not count towards your mastery rank. A gilded Zaw also unlocks its full potential, increasing its stats. I'll leave a link to a Zaw Builder in the video's description so you can test out the different part combinations. As a final note about the planes, let's talk about Arcwing. You can deploy your Arcwing for use in the planes. To do so, first you need to craft the Arcwing Launcher Segment. You can get the blueprint from your clan's dojo, or you can just buy it with platinum from the market. After it's crafted, you will be able to craft Arcwing Launchers. These are consumable gear items that will enable Arcwing on the planes. You will get 50 per craft. Just use one and the beacon will appear in the ground. After a few seconds, the Arcwing will be deployed and you can just walk up to it and you will be able to use it. This Arcwing can be used by other players, so you can deploy a beacon for your friends to use. Arcwing mode on the planes is very similar to regular Arcwing in space, but you won't have access to your Arcwing weapons. You use the weapons your Warframe has equipped. You will, however, have access to your Arcwing abilities. If you press the Quick Melee button, you can cancel Arcwing mode. And this concludes the video about Cetus and the Plains of Eidolon. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time.